Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Monday, August 16th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Still watching our three storms here, Tropical Storm Fred nearing landfall in Florida, Tropical Storm Grace to the south of Hispaniola, and newly formed Tropical Depression 8 to the southeast of Bermuda. We're going to do this in the usual order. Fred first off the Florida Panhandle. Here's the zoomed-in floater loop as the sun rises this morning, showing a more organized core of the system with clear wrapped banding forming a curly structure here. The low-level center is somewhere near the southern edge of that. If we look at recon data from the last couple of hours, we'll see that the center has been located near the southern edge of the cloud shield. That edge is right about here. And so we can see that there's a little bit of tilt to the vortex still with the mid-level curling just to the north of where recon is identifying the center on the southern side. But winds have increased and the pressure has gone down to 993 millibars. The flight level winds on the northeast side and on the west side of the center imply that surface winds could be somewhere between 50 and 60 miles per hour at a maximum, but we'll see what the plane measures over the next couple of hours as it hasn't fully sampled the circulation just yet. There's been a buoy here measuring sustained winds of at least 45 miles per hour over the last little while. If we look at the radar data from Mark Nissenbaum's FSU page, we'll see again the structure has improved with banding wrapping into a center that is very well defined on radar and this is moving generally northward over the last couple of hours, currently located about due south of Panama City. It's currently moving slightly to the east of NHC's last forecast and looks to be generally on a track toward this area near or just southeast of Panama City for a landfall sometime this afternoon or evening. At current speed, it's somewhere between six and nine hours from the coastline at this point. Of course, the question is whether FRED can intensify any further prior to landfall. And given the structure that it has, it is better organized, and there is a chance that this core wraps up and generates higher maximum winds during the next six to nine hours before landfall. However, the one limitation that is still holding Fred back a little bit is this dry air kind of punching in from the south. As the center of the circulation is located near the southern edge of the convection, as we noted on both radar and visible satellite imagery, so some of this dry air is right up against the edge of the core and is helping to erode some of the convection in at least the eastern semicircle of the storm. And this is possibly limiting the development of that core, at least during the last couple of hours. If that continues, it will be difficult for Fred to make any significant gains in intensity, uh, but some increase in max winds is possible. NHC last assessed them at about 50 miles per hour. Current aircraft data puts them between 50 and 60, and we could see even a slight increase, and max winds are likely to be between 60 and 70 miles per hour at landfall at this point in time. This is the current NHC forecast. Again, the system was moving just to the east of the original track, so currently it's following more the eastern half of that forecast cone. Again, this cone is only for the center position. The wind field itself is in orange, mostly on the east side. As we've talked about, this is a system that has most of the heavy weather to the east and north. And this wind field has become a little bit more expansive to the eastern side since the last recon mission. So they've actually extended this warning farther to the east down the Florida coastline into the Big Bend area near Steinhatchee compared to the current graphic. And the next forecast will reflect that. So possible uh, storm surge for the low-lying areas in this flooding vulnerable portion of the Florida coastline as these winds push water on shore and tropical storm force winds over 40 miles per hour possible near and east of the landfall point. And we've got rain again coming inland all the way up into the Appalachians over the next few days concentrated in the western and central Florida panhandle where flash flooding may be a possibility if several inches of rain comes down in a short span of time. And we even have a tornado watch on the eastern side as the center moves up. Some of these bands do have rotating elements in them. We can see that on the Eglin Air Force Base radar. Some of these bands do look suspicious, and there is some potential for an isolated tornado to come down in those bands even before the core of the storm arrives. So dangerous weather already moving on shore. So make sure you've taken your safety precautions already if you're in the panhandle. All right, that's it for Fred. We're going to move back out now to the big picture and switch to Tropical Storm Grace, and I should say depression because it hasn't yet regained Tropical Storm Force winds. But if we look at the satellite picture and a closer up view, 
We've seen a circulation that over the last day or so has become slightly better defined, now centered just to the southeast of the southern tip of the Dominican Republic and on recon data has shown a better defined center than we saw last night with 30 to 40 knot flight level winds on both the east and western side of the center that has seen a pressure that is still relatively high at about 1,007, but a few millibars lower than it was the last time an aircraft investigated the storm, currently moving to the west or west-northwest, and as we talked about yesterday, has kind of shifted south from the original track and is expected now to just skirt the southern part of Hispaniola or move over this, this kind of peninsula or point here and possibly interact with the Haitian Peninsula as well. Now, even if the storm is just skirting Hispaniola, this will be highly disruptive to the system and it's already having an impact. You can see that convection in general has a ragged appearance here, not a lot of well-defined banding this morning as the sun rises and this is a common appearance for a tropical depression or storm moving near the island and it will likely look rather disorganized for the next day or day and a half as it moves through this area however given that it's not moving directly over the bulk of hispaniola or cuba in the last couple of forecasts this new track kind of more toward the south does give it a little bit of a better chance to survive this interaction and as it goes farther west into the northwest caribbean we could still be talking about Grace being a storm even a few days from now and surviving to continue on toward the west. This is the water vapor satellite imagery showing again this upper level trough kind of to the north of the storm and this is generating a little bit of westerly shear at the moment and we showed how the system is centered right about there. There is some hint that the mid-level rotation is centered just a little bit to the east of that in water vapor imagery indicating that there could be a slight eastward tilt with height here and this would be again a pretty typical look for a system nearing Hispaniola uh, given that it tends to keep the moisture hanging back and this upper trough with the shear is also contributing to that and as the system moves toward the west again island interaction along with this light shear will be factors that hold the system down and it will likely stay fairly weak for at least the next while this is the GFS low level wind forecast from the 6C run Monday morning showing where Grace is centered here and you'll see how the track has kind of shifted over the last couple of days more toward the south. If we go out toward Tuesday morning here we see the system centered between Jamaica and the Haitian Peninsula. If we go back a couple of runs you'll see that yesterday some of the focus in vorticity was more on the northern side of Haiti on the model run. We've seen that correction more toward the south now on the GFS. In addition, it's correcting toward a storm being able to survive over the next couple of days. This eventually moves near the Cayman Islands on Wednesday morning, and if we go back a few runs, we'll see that the GFS was not even forecasting a storm to survive the interaction with Hispaniola and Cuba. But we are now seeing a better defined system that's passing over fewer mountains in general over the next couple of days, and so now the model is seeing that a storm will likely still exist and since we're talking about a southward shift in track, we're really no longer looking at these options for tracking north of the islands. Those have been decreasing in probability for the last couple of days in a row, and chances now greatly favor this staying south of Cuba and moving into the northwestern Caribbean. So now we're talking about Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, possibly seeing tropical storm impacts as we head into midweek, and then we're bringing Mexico into the picture here with the Yucatan Peninsula being in the sights of this storm's track. If we look at the GFS Ensemble mean here, we'll see that the storm on Wednesday evening is located between the Cayman Islands and the Yucatan Peninsula, and this mid-level ridge to the north of the storm is nosing in to the Gulf of Mexico, kind of forcing the storm toward the west-northwest, really preventing it from curving up into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Now later on, if it crosses into the western Gulf, whether it turns northwestward toward Texas or continues westward into the other part of Mexico remains to be seen. That's about four or five days from now. And how this ridge evolves to the north of the storm is still somewhat uncertain in model forecasts. So at this point, it seems fairly certain given the current trends in the motion of the system that we'll see this move into the northwest Caribbean and toward the Yucatan, but beyond that in the Gulf of Mexico, still some question marks until we get a couple days further down in the forecast. This is the current NHC track cone showing again the southward shift 
over the last couple of days, bringing this now south of Cuba, watches now out for Jamaica, watches for the entire coastline of Hispaniola, the mostly the southern coast here, at risk of the strongest tropical storm force winds, and we'll likely see watches for the Cayman Islands as well in fairly short order. And we'll be watching for flash flooding, unfortunately, in these islands, again, similar to when Fred passed over, heavy rains always likely in these mountainous areas of eastern Cuba, Jamaica, and Hispaniola, and unfortunately coupled with some earthquake damage in Hispaniola as well, a bad time to receive flash flooding threats, but that will continue for at least the next day or two. All right, that's Grace. We're going to switch back out. We have a third storm now to talk about. This is newly formed Tropical Depression 8. We mentioned it in last night's video, forming to the east of Bermuda. Here's the close-in loop showing the island of Bermuda in black here, and then a very clear rotation as the system has quickly developed over the last day or so. The main feature on satellite imagery is the well-defined rotation, but also the asymmetry, with some northerly shear pushing most of the thunderstorm activity down to the southern side. You can see that the center of rotation is right about here at the end of the loop on the northern edge of that thunderstorm activity. And that shear will be the main player in determining TD8's future over the next several days. I'll show you on the model forecasts, similar to what we looked at last night, this is the GFS mid-level humidity and wind plot showing that the black contour here indicates the surface slow. This is the MSLP contour, the pressure contour showing where TD8 is located. And then all this deep green, deep moisture is located mostly on the southern side. So that roughly corresponds with the satellite picture we just looked at. Now on the GFS, what's going on is we have a big ridge off of North Carolina. That's what's steering Fred on shore. But this is on the other side, also generating northerly flow that is pushing down on T8, causing shear and also tracking the storm toward the south. A bit of an odd track to have it coming down like this, but that's what we're dealing with. And if we look at the forecast going forward, we'll see that we continue to have a tilted system with the surface center located to the north of the mid-level center. And as we go forward on the GFS, eventually this shear actually causes a decoupling of the vortex where the surface low now takes off to the north in the dry air and the mid-level center, or what's left of it, goes way down here to the south, completely separates from the surface low, and we get a weakening or dissipating system that kind of loops around to the north as the surface, the weak surface low is now moving more with the low level flow towards the northwest instead of continuing southwestward with this deeper layer northeasterly flow on the back side of this ridge. Now, if we look at the forecast of the upper level flow from the GFS ensemble mean, we'll kind of see why this occurs on the GFS. Currently, we have light northeasterly flow over Bermuda, over the region where TD8 is. TD8 is about here on this plot. So light northeasterly flow corresponding to light to moderate northerly shear at the moment. Now, if we go forward a couple of days, this flow only gets stronger. So by the time we get out to Wednesday or Thursday, we're starting to see these teal colors show up 20 plus knots of northeasterly flow over this region. And TD8 will still be somewhere here in southwest of Bermuda. And so basically the vertical shear values double in magnitude. And so right now you can see that well, TD8 is already seeming a little bit asymmetric due to the current values of shear. And if we now double the shear, the system may struggle to stay vertically aligned. And so that's why on the GFS, we see this separation between the low level and mid level vortices due to that strong northerly push from the upper level winds. There is still a question though, as to how long or whether TD8 will stay together during that increase in shear. For example, on the h wharf model, we'll see that over time, it is able to become more vertically aligned and we get a strengthening tropical storm on the model by Tuesday morning. And if we continue going forward, we'll even see a hurricane develop southwest of Bermuda here with a very strong vortex. But as we go forward on the h wharf uh, we will see that eventually it starts to struggle and stronger values of shear start to decouple the system slightly with the surface center located north of the main body of green here, which is the deep layer moisture and thunderstorm activity. So on the model, we do get some weakening and the storm struggles to survive. But if we go back even just one model run, this was a different picture with a strengthening hurricane still remaining here by Thursday night or Friday morning on h wharf And so this kind of illustrates the sensitivity. Some runs are weak, some runs are strong, illustrating that we're kind of teetering on the edge here of shear values that may be overwhelming to the system, but it's possible that the system still fights it off 
and is able to stay aligned. Right now, I would say it's more likely that the system struggles a little bit as it moves southwest of Bermuda as these shear values double in magnitude. So we're likely to see the system uh, capped to some extent going forward. And the NHC forecast is kind of in that boat as well, keeping this at tropical storm strength as it curls northward over the next five days. Pretty slow track here. It is still very possible this becomes a hurricane, but at this point in time, it would still be over the open ocean and not really a threat to land. Bermuda is fairly close to this track, uh, but it is still a fair distance away. And if we look at that sat loop, there's the island brisk northerly wind today, but the system is fairly small overall. And as it loops around, the southern side is likely to be the side that has the heaviest weather, given that Bermuda will be on the northern side, unlikely to see a lot of impacts from this for the next few days, but there is a watch there just in case. As far as the track goes, this is unlikely to be a significant threat to land anytime soon. If we look at the GFS ensemble mean, we'll see if the storm is located near where the yellow is here by Wednesday evening. This ridge remains to the north of the storm that would continue directing it west in theory, uh, but this ridge is also weakening over time. And this is the kind of situation where the track likely will eventually turn toward the north. Exactly where? A little bit uncertain. For now, this is expected to be east of the United States, and there's no reason to doubt that forecast yet, but we'll keep an eye on this just in case it starts to dip a little bit farther south and west than expected. That could happen if the system holds together and becomes a hurricane over the next few days, in which case the track could shift farther west. But for now, the expectation is that this will turn to the north, well to the east of the eastern seaboard. All right, guys, that's it for now. Stay safe, everyone. If you're in Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and Hispaniola, Cuba, and Jamaica, all these areas receiving direct impacts over the next day or two from Fred and Grace, and we'll watch TD8 as well as it does a looping track to the south of Bermuda. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.